The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our Bursa Malaysia webinar. And this is Shen Chu. I am uh, tuning in today with our speaker today, which is uh, Sisi Yong, who is a director of Strix Index. And uh, afterward, I will share more with you his profile. And uh, today, we are very glad to welcome you all to join the Oscillator Masterclass. And in the next one and a half hours, you're going to learn how you can use oscillators such as RSI and Stochastic in timing the market. Now, before we begin, as usual, just want to check if you can hear the converse, uh, our conversation well. Or, so if you can hear us, please go to the control panel and click raise the hand button. Okay. So if you can hear us, please click raise the hand button. Okay. Let me see. All right. So most of you can hear me very well. All right. You can put down your hands. Okay. Thank you for tuning in. I'm uh, the speaker, CC, and I will make sure that we'll make do everything within our power to make it well worth your time. Now, disclaimer: the first thing I want to mention is that whatever we uh, share today is only for uh, educational purpose only. So in no way that we give you any buy or any sell. So if you use the indicator to time the market entry or exit, you do it at your own risk. Okay? What what we are going to do is to do uh, we we'll present it on a case study basis as an educational material. So. Here are a series of uh, webinars that we have designed for you by uh, Bursa. And uh, today we are on uh, topic eight, which is the eighth month of the year. We talk about oscillator masterclass, but we still have four more uh, webinars for you uh, this year. We have SMEA crossover method, which happened uh, next month, and we will talk about tech industry exploration because as you all know, tech is a high growth sector. So in October, we'll talk about tech industry exploration. Then 11th uh, on the November, we'll talk about intrinsic value masterclass. And on the 12th topic is understanding essence of portfolio management, which we'll do it at the end of the year. But um, we will also roll out a few more basic classes. For those of you who miss out basic classes, just stay tuned because there'll be uh, four more webinars coming your way, which will tell you what are stocks market, how to see the indices and so on. So we will roll out additional four more webinars to help you pick up the fundamental basic skills on how you can uh, understand the market. Because when you understand the market, you can join in for our more intermediate session and take your skill to a higher level. All right, so today uh, we will talk about technical analysis, one part of technical analysis which we focus on oscillator as an indicator. Now, here is our speaker. So our speaker is uh, is a very accomplished speaker. He is a full-time trader, okay? And uh, not many, not many uh, uh, people can be a full-time trader and he is a living example of how he can trade full-time and make money. So in other words, he has no, Trading full time is his income. Okay, if he if he did not make money in trading, then he really did not have income. So to be a full time trader, he has to be really profitable, and he's one of the people who is have done it really big, and he's also a local participant of Bursa Malaysia derivative. So he trades a lot of Bursa Malaysia futures as well. So he is none other than the founder of Straits Index and Jam Bahad, which is a proprietary trading company and associate participant of BMD. Right? He's also a speaker for SIDC and also various uh, magazine and, uh, for example, Money Compass, Sinchu Daily, and his columnist for them for more than 10 over years. So you want to see his column, you can buy Sinchu and buy Money Compass magazine. Okay, so without further ado, uh, let me hand it over to you, CC. Uh, hi, yeah. uh, Thanks. Thanks for um, joining this. Yeah, thanks for sharing your experience with us today. Okay, I am making you the presenter now. Okay. All right. Um, you can see my screen now. Yes, perfect. Seeing your screen. Okay. Um, good evening, everybody. So. Thank you, Chun-Sen, for introducing me. So let's, uh, without further ado, we'll start the webinar. Today, our topic will be on um, oscillator. It's one of the, I think, most uh, commonly used indicator. Actually, in, in technical analysis, you can use any indicator that you want. Uh, I'll share with you some of the basic of 
this oscillator uh, and the popular oscillators like RSI and stochastic. And then most importantly, I will apply this in a strategy. Um, you, you don't have to really like uh, make use of what the percent, what is my the way to use it. Most important is actually how to apply this into your trading and the process of you know uh, acquiring all this. Well, first thing first, uh, technical indicators, this is the uh, 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 definition. So they are mathematically uh, calculations based on the price, volume, and so on and so forth, right? So you analyze the historical data. Uh, the technical analyst or what we try to do is actually use these indicators to predict the futures of price movement. Although some sometimes or most of the time I say uh, we almost cannot forecast or predict the future, but yeah, we try to um, know what is the direction of the market. So from here, we try to you or apply this indicator in our trading. Now, the basic <clears throat> first thing, the is oxidative is actually one indicator that you know it varies over time within a band, you know, above and below certain. Apply this. Uh, uh, we should, well, show you in, in a chart. Okay, so usually it will tell you two levels, which is over bought and over sold. Okay. This is actually very close, really related to support and resistance. So if you apply together, so it should actually give you some positive result in your trading. So we'll focus on two only, which is RSI and stochastic. Now, RSI or relative strength index, so it's actually check the power or the momentum of uh, a certain price. So in this case, we can apply to stocks, indices, futures, so any commodity with price, you know. So uh, this is the fundamental, which you know is actually developed by Willis uh, Wilder, and this I consider is a midterm momentum oscillator, which measuring the relative strength of price change. So usually, if this indicator indicator is actually above seventy percent, so we will say the price is actually in a bullish, uh, uh, or sometimes you can say it's actually overbought. Okay, but overbought is actually means bullish. You know, in a bullish market, the overbought can be keep on continue to be overbought. Okay, so it is a uh, bullish. So that means if you see the indicator is above seventy, don't, don't sell just yet because it's actually showing you um, the price is actually quite bullish, but the uptrend may ends when it falls out of 70%, that means it dropped below 70%, then only you try to sell it. Okay, and then uh, in contrast, oversold is when the indicator is actually dropped below 30%. So um, oversold, usually if also means you can buy, right? Uh, no, you can prepare to buy, you can accumulate or build position, but definitely it's not a sign that the price will immediately uh, rebound usually. So because oversold means bearish okay whenever the market is in bearish mode it will become oversold and oversold and oversold so that's why a downtrend may end only when it break above 30 percent which is the that means the rsi break uh, 30 percent so you can see this is a chart showing you the rsi indicator of one particular stock in Brussels, malaysia all right the line indicator is actually 70 percent so that means any price above this 70% theoretically is actually over uh, bought, which is bullish or, you know, you can prepare to sell. This is the signal is indicate. And another one is below 30%. So these two levels uh, is the one that you need to take care of. Of course, um, there is some uh, software or, or analysts or traders, you may actually use 80% or above 80% or below 20%, uh, you can actually play around with this. Later on, I'll show you in a computer simulation showing you that why you know you can actually apply either 80, 70, uh, because the most important thing is you understand um, when when something turns uh, uh, from, let's say overbought, okay, if reverse or whatever price or, or action inverse of overbought means the uptrend ends, so then you can start thinking about selling, right? This is the two important level you can uh, keep in mind. Now, uh, the basic of it is if you want to know the formula, this is the formula. It's very simple formula. 
So I'm not going to explain in, in detail, but basically it's showing you the average gain and average loss of a particular time. Let's say, for example, 14 days, okay? Uh, whether most of the day is actually going up or going down. So from there, it measures a relative strength because it, it, it relative means over the 14 days period. It doesn't mean uh, measure after the next 14 days, the 15 days, you know, it, it, it don't care. So that's how it works, all right? So from here, you can see that somehow um, RSI will fire certain um, indicative signal where, for example, in this case, if from a bearish mode, when RSI break above 30%, all right, it actually tells you it could be a buy signal, right? And then vice versa, when it's actually reached 70% and drop from the 70%, it could mean uh, a sell signal. So that means um, basically you can apply break 30 to buy and then break below 70, Okay, break to 70 is actually good because you can keep the soft, but it, once it breaks below 70, then you can consider to sell uh, a particular stock. This is just theory, okay? But we will apply this whether this is working or not. Okay, we'll pick one example in, uh, later. Okay, and then another signal is you should actually sell when a stock or RSI, the stock price, uh, which the RSI actually fell below 30 because it's not, I mean, the price is going to be a bearish mode. Okay, we show you another example uh, here. You can see that it, it could actually has a region. That means the RSI can stay above 70. This is actually different from the previous example, which once it's reached 70, it's come back. This it stays at 70%. Okay, and no one is actually stayed below. So staying below or staying above the region, you consider this is a continuous um, signal. That means when it stay above 70, the price can actually go higher and higher. It could have some correction and it could be end of the trend. No one knows, okay? But when it's dropped below the 70% means the price can go lower in this case, okay? Okay, and later on, uh, you can see that, you know, if the price break below 30%, all right? Uh, it doesn't mean that the price will immediately rebound, but when it stay below 30%, don't buy yet. But you can accumulate, but don't buy uh, and and hope for it could rebound immediately. So this is how you um, so-called use the RSI. But RSI is actually uh, considered uh, mid-term. To me, it's mid-term, okay, uh, indicator. So next, we're going to discuss about another indicator, which will, I'll give you more example in this indicator is the stochastic, okay? In this case, uh, stochastic is a very similar uh, indicator because they are classified as oscillator, which they have from zero to 100% and within the band it swing up and down, okay? This is the indicator that we are gonna share. And this is developed by George C. Lane. And this is considered short-term momentum indicator. The reason for short-term indicator is that um, when we use technical, we are more likely to be on a short-term side, okay? If you're using fundamental, maybe you're more towards uh, the investment and longer term. But of course, you can be a hybrid, which you use a short-term indicator, and then you are filtered by using um, the finance, uh, fundamental uh, ratios or financial ratio, which we will discuss uh, in a bit, okay? It's actually very similar to RSI. The old board is actually above 70 by my definition, okay? Uh, someone could be like 80, you, you can set 80, you can set 20. It actually depends on you and then the parameter you put in into the stochastic. Okay, let's say for, for example, if, if it's above 70, okay? I'll consider a particular counter is in bullish mode when the stochastic is actually above 70. And, and, and it could stay above 70 for some time, that means the stock is in uptrend, okay? And it will only ends when the indicator actually fell up of 70%. And in contrast, oversold is when the stochastic is below 30%. And this is considered bearish. As I said, uh, don't just simply buy when it's dropped to 30 because it can stay there because of bearish, short-term bearish mode. Stochastic will, will, will indicate the price in short-term, um, uh, short-term bearish mode. 
So the downtrend will only end when it breaks above 30%. And this stochastic has got, or STC has got a, a better uh, representing of the indicator, which it has got a crossover trading signal uh, because stochastic has got two lines, which is the K line and the D line of percent K, percent D. So these two actually, they are the moving average of each other. So you can actually use this crossover just like in, you know, when you're using moving average, uh, when a crossover, short crossover of a longer period, usually indicate uh, a price will likely to go higher. So that's why you can actually fire a buy and sell signal. So let me show you some example here. And similar or same as RSI, I would use 70% as, got, uh, as the barrier or the differentiation of uh, whether the market going to a short term overbought and overbought to me is equal equivalent to uh, bullish mode or short term bullish. So you can see that the price is actually above uh, 70%. Uh, oh, sorry, the, in the indicator is actually above 70%. The price can keep on continuing to go up in short term. It could be two days, three days. But once the price drop below it, okay, then it actually shows you the price can actually go um, uh, lower. Okay, in this case, you can see that once this is actually above, okay, above seventy percent, uh, short term go up, okay, and once it's actually drop below, okay, the price fall. But then if you if you monitor it closely, if you buy when the price break above. Okay, which is about this region and you sell when the price break below which you back to square one you don't make money right so that's why um when in trading you have to be creative a little bit okay in this case you could be well worse you know by firing a buyer signal when when it's actually break below 30 percent which is ab about here okay and you can actually sell signal over here, which, which is this region, or you can use a crossover of D. Okay, this line is K line. In, in STC, you know that two K lines can be a color or total line. So when the K line, okay, let me let me clean this slide for you. Hold on, huh? Okay, when this crossover happens, which the K cross over the D, you can consider this as a buy signal. And when the percent K cross below it, you can consider this is actually much better uh, signal because it's actually indicate you can buy around this region. This is the price of the stock. Okay, and then you can sell around the high. Of course, nobody can actually um, catch the bottom precisely. Uh, every time you, you you can once in a while catch the low, which you know you can claim you know, I know where's the low, but um, uh, honestly, if you if you trade long enough, you know that you actually cannot catch the low and high every day. In fact, if you're trading correctly, you don't even need to catch the price at the low or bottom and sell as a pick because it's actually really not. Um, it shouldn't be something that you you you're looking for. Okay, as long as you can make certain uh, change in price, which is actually, uh, we, we will consider that that is a successful trade. All right, now uh, let me clear this. Okay, I'll move to the next slide. All right, uh, okay. Another one is actually you have to monitor it will be the, uh, 30% uh, level, which whenever this STC drop below it, so it, it, it actually, uh, for me, is an indication of the price in bearish mode, which it could go lower and lower. So in this case, you should sell the stock or you shouldn't keep a stock, but you will prepare to go in when the price uh, or the stochastic or STC break above 30%. But of course, in this case, you can see that um, it has got a false Break out. So if you buy in this level, you may actually start because the price can go even lower. 
and then only this one will be the correct one. So sometimes indicator, um, in fact, I won't say sometimes, most of the time indicator cannot be correct all the time. In fact, uh, as a trader, you cannot be correct all the time, but you need certain winning ratio, which will give you a better chance of making money. Okay, so this is the two important level of uh, using stochastic. But next, I will, I will show you some example which is more important than only follow the 70% and 30% alone. Okay, this is the formula um, of stochastic. Of course, you do not really have to know 100%, but you know, having the formula will help you a bit you know, uh, on why this happens and all this. Please bear in mind, all indicators has got flaws. The reason is because it uses price and calculate it. So once you do all this computation of prices, you have a, a problem called the elected indicator. So that means the price will be, or the indicator itself is actually lack a bit, maybe three days, four days, or maybe the indicator cannot be rely 100% because of that lacked. So that's why most of the full-time trader or if you're doing short-term trading, you need to look at something called uh, time and sell or tape reading, which you can actually easily available by looking at the price and all this, you know, from any software or your broker will provide you with all the tools that you need. Um, but of course, looking at chart is one of the easiest way to um, judge whether something, because visually it's actually much easier. For me, I, I, I prefer uh, visually, but during my uh, in day-to-day -day trading, look at price is actually as important as looking at chart itself. So we move on to the next, um, um, oh, there's another one that you have to um, understand is that there is a, a, a variant called slow stochastic. Okay, usually most of the indicators that we use nowadays are slow stochastic. Slow stochastic is actually a, a smoothing or you know, um, indicator that apply moving average into an indicator. So that's why it costs slow. Uh, it gives you much, uh, you know, indicative uh, signal sometimes. So which we look at, um, this is the slow indicator or slow stochastic. Okay. Uh, and I'll show some um, arrows, which this stochastic actually fires you some, you know, signal going up. up but Stochastic is a very, very short-term indicator. So if you fire, fire any signal, short-term long, uh, short-term buy signal or short-term bullish signal, it's actually maybe good for three to five days. So you have to bear in mind the stochastic is actually meant for a, a short-term. But of course, uh, any long-term trend, start with a short-term trend, right? So it could actually also spot the correct long-term trend or the beginning of the long-term trend. So, but um, when you're using stochastic, you have to be careful is um, during a sideways market, the indicator become less uh, useful because uh, it, it just shows that the market is sideways, but market sideways means the market can only move maybe three or four prices uh, for one week. That means whenever you catch a, a buy or sell signal, the difference can be only one cent or even minus one cent. So you could, you know, not really make money if you're actually um, doing a trade for survey markets by using stochastic. So this is the catch you have to uh, be careful. But as I said, when you're trading, um, really don't 100% rely on just indicator itself because um, indication or indicators are good, but not everything, uh, that you need in trading. Okay, in this case, uh, I'll show you to you another type of signal fire by the crossover of person K and D. You will have a lot of uh, buy and sell. So this is actually especially important for those who do short-term trading, um, like intraday, contra trading. You know, this is quite uh, useful because uh, it shows you certain short-term swing for the price to go up and down. And I understand that as a trader in the beginning, you need to have this short term skill uh, to actually accumulate enough equity so that you, you can you can trade in a bigger size. So this is a good start, you know, in terms of um, the choice of in indicator that you can use for your short term trading. 
But besides that, uh, you, you can also use prices or which is depth reading. But there's so many things that you need to put together before uh, it can consider as a package of trading strategy, which uh, I'm sharing with you on how to actually build this uh, into a trading strategy. So usually the easiest way to build a strategy is by using indicator because you know you can have all the formulas ready and apply and, and someone has done uh, so many researches just to prove that this indicator works. So you just rely on all this indicator. Honestly, I don't invent the indicator myself. So I'm just using all the readily available. In fact, I'm using a handful indicator or not many indicator I'm, I'm actually applying in my trading. So stock test is one of the uh, good indicator which I'm still using, you know, day-to-day uh, -day basis to check out whether it's oversold or bought, okay? So, uh, but there are some strategies built with just price and volume as well, which which uh, you can actually build a chart with pure prices. Uh, you'll be surprised uh, when you see many full-time traders don't use chart at all, or some of the traders using chart that plot themselves. Let's say, for example, I still plot my own chart by using one liner. So yeah, you don't be surprised uh, that we use a very primitive way to look at the market. In fact, you don't have to be too complex when you're really uh, trading full time. So we'll discuss about this uh, in a bit. Okay. Now, this is just to show to you, sometimes you don't have to uh, be worried about the term that you use. Let's say, for example, as I said, over, uh, uh, sorry, this is overbought. I, I think I have a typo here. So overbought is actually bullish, means when the indicator go above 70%, okay, it just shows that the the, the price or the share price can go up higher and higher. So it's actually overbought and overbought, uh, overbought and overbought uh, again and again means the market is in bullish mode. So you can actually build with this kind of uh, philosophy or methodology to build a strategy. But of course, to build a strategy, you need a tool. Um, but first, what parameter to use? Let's say. 14 days RSI default one, uh, you use a 933 stochastic, you know. So how to choose <clears throat> this parameter or period? Uh? So one thing easiest one is actually you browse the uh, stock one by one. So they apply the indicator, see how this indicator responds, all right? And change the parameter to get the best result. Or uh, using a computer backtest system. So today I'm gonna share a little bit on how to do this because you see, when someone tells you, okay, I'm using stochastic, how, how you know that this indicator is actually useful to your market or to the instrument that you're trading? Sometimes the indicator you're using, uh, I'm using 14 days RSI, but maybe for good for futures, but to stop, maybe nine days is better, or maybe 20 days is better, or maybe 30 days is actually more suitable to your trading style. So you need to choose uh, uh, so-called um, correct parameters for your trading style. And also, you may actually always have some seminars that I'm using stochastic to do this and that. But can you prove to yourself, okay, you're not biased, but you're using a real proven strategy for yourself. So here, I'm just showing you, okay, you don't need to know programming actually to do a bad testing. This is a good thing about this. I'm going to share with you. And uh, Busan Malaysia has got a very good tools also to, for you to to filter up uh, stocks, which I'm going to share uh, after this as well. Okay, don't be alarmed because uh, you know when you hear back testing must be very sophisticated. Actually, I recommend everybody to do back testing because uh, I'm actually quite concerned when uh, when I see someone so confident on certain indicator, they will say this indicator uh, I use this and this is very useful. Um, I'm actually very concerned when someone tell me this because. Um, uh, I've been trading so many years, but I'm not confident in any indicator that I'm using and, and able to say that 100% this will work because uh, something can work for this period of time doesn't mean that it will work for you know the next 10 years. So you have to be careful on this, but how to know um, whether this thing works or not, at least for the period that you are in or the period that you're testing is to go through a testing. And during testing, if you go through the stock one by one, how many stock you can 
you can actually record or you can actually imagine go through one by one visually 100 200 500 1000 can you remember all this signal and give you a good statistic you need to have a lot of samples okay some people may have go through a bull run and, and thought they know how to trade stock but you know that is bull run everybody can trade stock but then can you actually survive you know when things may not be in your favor so that's why you need to be um, very very subjective in doing trading and 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 adopt a trading strategy so it is actually not a good idea to trade without you ever test it okay so, and it's equally not a good uh, trading idea if you're trading without a four test means you, you really test your idea before you actually put in real money or you put in your life saving you know into trading now um <clears throat> The most important part, I think I'll be repeating, you know, this over and over again during my, my seminars uh, is to not fall into at least these four traps. There are more traps, up, but okay, but this is most important one. Whenever you do a uh, back test, okay, it's call linear effects. What is call linear effects is um, when you have an indicator showing you a buy signal, you go and confirm with another indicator. But if you look at 10 indicator, okay, for example, you put 10 indicator in your chart, right? You say that if nine out of 10 indicators shows buy signal, I buy. And, and vice versa. If three or, or three show buy, maybe I don't buy. If let's say most of the indicators show me sell signal, so I sell the stock. It, it looks promising, right? Not really. This is a call in the effect traps, which you actually over supply yourself with indicator too much. And you tell yourself and convince yourself which is something that you shouldn't be because you over optimize the strategy. If you use this because it's too many variables, every indicator comes with one or two variables. If you have 10 or 20 indicator, so you have 20, 30, 40 variable which mix up and, and, and you would you would not have a good result in long run. So don't ever uh, do that uh, with 10, 20 indicators to confirm a buy or sell signal. Second is confirmation bias. You always see the signal you wanted because if you go through the chart one by one, you always see that, oh, whenever the SMA cross over 10, 20, so it's a buy signal. So if I follow this indicator, most of the stock that I bought, I make money. Actually, it may not be the case because you may only sample 10, 20, 30 times, you know, uh, in your trading. So it gives you a small sample and a fake confidence uh, to trade. So try not to do that as well, because confirmation is bias is something that you want to avoid all the time. Over optimize means um, you keep on uh, build a strategy or indicator which uh, suits the market. 100%. You want to make money 100%. In fact, you know, sometimes when we we, we, we do back tests, all this, we, we don't want uh, to over optimize. So if I see a strategy that make money 100% of the time, I will actually just ignore it because it's not going to be exist, right? And because this will lead to a, a, a scenario called curve fitting, you try to fit the past market into the future. The future has, has not begun yet, but you think that what happens last time will 100% happen next. Actually, that is wrong. What happened last time could repeat, but it may not be 100% like what you wanted. So this is the four traps that I want, if possible, everybody remember not to um, over-optimize or you know, force into this indicator trap. Now, to do computerized spec tests actually to take away of this kind of problem because you test a lot of things. So that's why you won't have a bias, you know, you like certain counters, that's why you always see the good signal, but you don't like this signal or this counter so that you always skip this signal, you know. So this will take the confirmation bias away from you and you can't lie to yourself because we will tend to do that. You see some things, you read some text, but you type something, but you read the other way. So yeah, it, it happens and statistically represent the system and strategies because you need a big statistics to prove that this works. So test and create rules to be executed so that you can actually uh, 
play around when should I buy and sell to whether this will change the result. Sometimes you'll be surprised, huh? You apply certain indicator, but you change the parameters aware uh, around, huh? it won't change the result. So you'd be surprised, right? So this cannot be done if you're doing manually. You can only do it without emotion, without bias, by using a computer. Although it sounds so complicated, but it's not. You can download this software called Ninja Trader. Uh, it's freely available. Uh, and, and download this software and test whatever indicator that you want to uh, establish the strategy. So in this case, you don't need programming. You just need point and click and some understanding. Of course, the YouTube and, and, and a lot of uh, comedy forum will help you to, to go. But I'll, I'll give you some idea how to do this. Because you want to be an informed trader. You, find, you want to be an informed investor so that you will stay long enough in trading and investing stocks uh, so that you can actually learn what is actually trading. Because it could take one year, two years you know, to understand all this and before you can actually turn full time as your career. So in this uh, slides, I will show you how to add parameters. You know, this is actually, if you don't want to do this, also can because um, this is basically uh, a, a full flash uh, kind of inputs that I put in and all this. Second is uh, use a stochastic, okay, to trigger a signal. So the buy and sell signal I'm using stochastic stochastic to cross above this signal. So in this case, when stochastic cross above certain percent, I, I enter into a buy position. And because stocks you can buy, you, you cannot short sell first uh, for the moment for certain stocks. Now, certain stocks can be done, but in this case, we only use a buy side. So that means I will enter a buy side. And when the condition met, I have a buy position, then I sell. So I also put in profit target, you know, 100% you make before you sell or after you make 100%, you need to sell stop loss order and also a traveling stop uh, in this case but this is actually not important also because you can actually skip this part still able to do it as long as you use a stochastic uh, buy and sell signal in this uh, criteria you're actually good to go now then <clears throat> if you are good in programming or you know how to write a bit of coding and all this then you're in luck because you can actually modify the code to give you a better feel, uh, give you a better, uh, um, in terms of uh, sophistication on building up the strategy. But uh, today's seminar, we focus on how to prove this indicator, whether it works or not. Because when you're in trading, you need that confidence to be able to trade. Now, this slide shows you the strategy of using stochastic works, okay? Because uh, I test in certain uh, stocks, let's say for example, in this case, uh, these stocks actually yield a positive total net return, okay, which is positive. You, you lose some money, okay, but not a big deal. Uh, overall, you accumulate uh, quite high in terms of profit, 101%, and your drawdown is only, uh, let me show it to you. Your drawdown is saying only maximum drawdown is only 2.4 percent. That means which is very very good, okay. Uh, but of course the sub ratio is not very good in this case. Uh, I'll show you why also. So you make money, but you lose a little bit of money. But your average total trades, all these are okay, and and this is more like investment type kind of thing because you don't trade a lot, but you have a very positive return. Of course, because I optimize for the uh low drawdown so you have less trade now and <clears throat> the good thing about computer trading is um you use this chart to show it to you uh when you enter and exit a market you can see from here um you enter into a market uh at this price let's say for example oh let me use okay Okay, and then you sell at profit target, which is exactly the point before the price fall down, right? Uh, yeah, in a way you, you actually have this kind of indication, but also you will lose some money when the market is in, is in whipsaw. But can you execute this kind of orders? Then you have to be very, very um, robot. You know, you, you work as a robot. What we call this kind of a trading call, uh, you know, 
usually computer trading you don't have emotion but when you're actually trading with emotion then you can't execute orders like this but if you train yourself to be like that uh for, for example I'm, I'm trading like this so i just go in by following my own strategy and rules uh, i just go in without thinking twice because you need to have that kind of belief in your strategy before you can actually execute certain trades so this is one of the example uh you can actually trade by using um that's the the generator signals okay let me clear up All right we move on to the next slide um if you have questions so please ask me in the bit because i'll 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 sure i'm sure some of you are interested how i'm i do it but as i said don't um satisfied by just looking at the result is positive then um can i just use the strategy and trade uh not so much 100 yet because you need to test um over other counters as well you, you can't be just pick one counters one chart you study this work and this counter can use this but can you apply the similar uh, uh method or strategy into another counter which will give you a similar result so in this case uh uh i can show to you the indicator is actually not perfect because it's only one strategy but it's actually able to generate positive return because i i tested all these different different counters by um using the same strategy so most of the counter actually give you positive result but three out of like 20 uh, are losing money but which is fine okay as long as it gives you a positive result but of course is it enough not really you need more to um help you in terms of trading okay but this strategy <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> this strategy is itself uh it's not perfect but it works already it works already you need to prove first thing first whether i can apply indicator into stock trading so this case proof stochastic works but whether it gives you an edge in trading in long run not necessarily so you need more than trading with just an indicator let's say for example it, it won't work let's say if you have ten thousand okay ten thousand and you go in every time you go in 10,000 in your trades. I don't think this will work because you see, this is 20 counters, for example. But if you put in all the money into one of the counters that don't make money in long run using this indicator, you lose all the money or you lose some of the money. Uh, but you, at the same time, you don't, uh, you don't make money for other counters that you actually need to invest as well. So <clears throat> this strategy works only if you apply everything like in what i did which over the 20 counters you put all the money in proportionate to each of the uh, counters but of course there's certain rules you can follow also which i will show you in a bit <clears throat> uh, we call position sizing but before that one of the methods that i use usually when i filter up the stocks which fire a buy signal i have a, 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 a just a small trick which helps a lot okay whether this signal will work uh, because <clears throat> buying stock is only buy you can sell first for example so what you do is you filter up stock that meets the fundamental uh, good fundamental prospect so this will improve your winning rate of trading signal of this particular trading signal yeah somehow it's actually over optimized as well lah. but this is a trick that i find that uh, it could um, improve your trading uh very very in a very very big way so, so <clears throat> you can use the fundamental elements so this i'm using a method called filtering with financial ratios so where to find these financial ratios um Brusa malaysia has got a site called Brusa marketplace this is the best place for you to look for this okay you can go to the screener uh which on top of the two bar there okay the home and education game and so on and so forth click on the tool which is the wrench uh, icon and click the screener okay once you create a screener you can have a choices of you know uh, using what type of financial ratio to filter up stocks in this case i recommend three only first is the p ratio second will be price to book value the third will be earning per share okay 
Um, in this case, uh, I'm choosing the PE, which is from 10 to 15, which is just right, you know, before the market go into a, 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 a bull run. And also price of book, which is actually below two, 1.6, you know, that kind of level. Um, and earnings must be growing in certain percent. But in this case, as long as the earnings are actually growing, so this stock is actually good to close. So once I apply all this, I have a total matches of 75 counters. So from here, I click the shows results. It gives you, give me all the counters name. So in this case, what you can do is you can use this in these counters uh, to filter up using, let's say for, for example, the stochastic strategy that we, we just used just now, all right? And apply into filter stocks with all the fundamentals you actually will get a much, much better returns in terms of the stock that you filter because certain stocks that don't have um, a good PE, they said, for example, the PE may be very high, so you may not actually enter into that stock. But it's okay because you may miss one or two stocks that really go uh, in a, into a bull run, but as long as you make money in long run, that is actually fine. Believe me that trading is not about make uh, 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 a, a home run in one stock. Trading for a living is making some consistent money every month and, and treat this trading as a career. That then you're, you're actually good to um, become a full-time trader. But just with all these two may not be enough again, uh, it may seem so complicated to trade, right? It's actually no, uh, because the center of trading is here. You need to have a money and risk, uh, a risk management system because having a trading signal is not yet 100% a complete system because the center of all system trading is actually on risk and money management and most traders fail in this part. So if you fail in this part, if you have the best signal in the world, but it's not going to work, uh, still. Now, risk management is the center of all trading or successful trading. Is I'm using a very simple way uh, to apply this um, using a risk one percent rule, which most important at all is actually cut loss lah. But what is actually how to cut loss, which is one percent rules means let's say for example, if you have a uh, hundred thousand in your account, okay, you buy a stock. That price at one dollar or one ringgit uh, with cash uh, means you risk all the money into this particular stock. So you 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 and your returns totally down on this one particular stock. Uh, then you are investing into this company. But actually, for trading, you should not do this because you can actually try something else, which you limit your loss. Okay, so that one percent is the limit of the loss. One percent means if you have hundred thousand in your account. Every time you trade or buy certain stocks, do not risk more than 1,000 or 1% 1 of your equity. That means if you have 100,000 in your account, account, every time you buy one stock, if that stock lose more than 1%, in this case is 1,000, cut loss. If you cannot cut loss, then you need to find some hedge. But in stocks, uh, so far, unless you, you go to the single stock futures or short selling, otherwise you can't uh, hedge directly unless you are trading in bull, bull chips, then you might. So set the maximum loss you're willing to take, which is 1% in what, what I'm actually recommending to you and set the cut loss level from your uh, analysis or backtest. Let's say you cut stock at 10%, okay? Then the, if the price of the stock falls more than 10%, you must cut loss. And that 10% is actually equal to 1% of your equity. This is actually very important. So calculate the burn size based on this and you actually each trade how many or how much equity you're going to risk into one single trade. So you can find out uh, percent sizing, which is, shouldn't be a big problem. Okay. The problem is whether you stick to this formula all the time. Uh, I tell you um, what I do is because I, why, why I can trade full time because I stick to all these rules all the time. Uh, to me, I have no second guess whether this will work or not because I trusted this 100% and, and this is what brings me to what I'm doing now. So that's why, um, to me, there's no second thought whether this will work because I need this 
uh, and this is the only way work for me. All right. So if you're hundred uh, percent uh, in in your equity, so if your risk tolerance is actually one percent, which I'm recommending now, your stop loss is actually eight percent. You can put ten percent and so on and so forth. You can build in Excel just like me. If the share price is two ringgit, you can calculate your pin size should be twelve thousand five hundred, which is just by using the formula. Okay, or be creative lah. Huh? How to get this formula? In fact, you can Google. You can just snapshot this uh, into your phone, and then you you try to get this formula out. So you can calculate your position size should be twelve thousand. If you cut loss at eight percent, then you are losing. <clears throat> your stop loss is actually one ringgit and eighty four cent, and you lost one maximum. You losing one thousand only. So this is how you actually uh, manage your money. Now, uh, building a strategy may not be too complex. You need a system that can give you a positive result over, you know, for long term. Because <clears throat> if one good trade or good day, even months does not count, right? Because you, you need that long term system to give you that long term profit that you wanted. Because once you become full time trader, you may not be making money every day. Sometimes you may have losing day unless you're doing a lot of scalping. If you're doing scalping, then uh, I'm sure Bursa Malaysia will have, or your broker can and introduce you to a, another program called day trading. So which you will be actually have a very low uh, brokerage, okay? And then you can do buy and sell stocks uh, in intraday. If that's the case, then you need a, a much quicker way to trade. You may actually build your own system or you may actually look at price alone, all right? So, once you have a robust system, practice it by following all the rules defined. Now, next thing you need to define the rules by yourself, when you should cut, when you should shouldn't cut, for example. And maybe I give you some hint. Stocks usually move uh, when there's some news or there's some fundamental change. In, in fact, all the prices in the world uh, behave that way. That means whenever there was there's a signal, there's, a, there's some big thing going on, the price tends to move uh, in tandem with that signal. So, for example, um, every three months, this um, all the stocks, all the counters in Bursa Malaysia will announce the financial uh, uh, result. So that is the best time you actually look for any uh, signal in terms of technical. You can look at any signal in terms of fundamental ratios. Let's say, for example, they improve in terms of earnings. Usually, the price will uh, move in positive direction. But things sometimes don't don't work directly to you. It may move first, or it may move one day later. But if you have this kind of uh, uh, statistic, or you have this kind of information, then you can actually uh, get this. From your, I mean, for as for your advantage, Bursa Malaysia has got a website. You know, you can check out on the company announcement every three months quarterly. They will announce all these results. This is the website you need to look for. Besides, only look at technical. But of course, you can, you can, using the other way around, just like what I'm showing you, use your system to filter up stocks that you wanted in terms of technically, which the stock will be moving up, and then compare this to the marketplace uh, financial result, if both are actually giving you promising indication, then you actually good to go. So once you have this, you have to define the rules. Uh, don't expect to define the rules, you know, in one day. You, you may need um, some time, okay? If you don't have a, a, a system to follow, you may build your own, but it could actually take up to I want to say one month, but actually, to be frank with you, it may take to one year, you know, and, and so on and so forth, at least to build a solid system up. So be patient a bit, which is very important in trading. You 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 have to be very, very patient. Um, because what I can say is most of the time when we have a losing position, if you're patient enough, uh, the price actually come back to you. But of course, by having said that, then you don't cut off which is very dangerous. So you still have to follow the rules whether you should cut loss in 1% or you hedge your position. Okay, so for stocks, combining the fi uh, combining financial result actually will give you much, much, much better uh, result in terms of uh, the money that you can make. 
So with this, actually, um, uh, I'll end today's uh, tonight's seminars. And if you have any question about the system or the website I'm using, so please uh, we can uh, go to uh, discuss a bit on uh, the Q and A session. I pass back to Chunsen. All right. Thank you very much, um, CC. There are already uh, questions on how to use uh, 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 so, uh, oscillators. Okay, but before we do the questions, let's launch a poll. All right. So on your screen, um, you will ask, do you often rely on indicators to trade? So please select one that's applicable to you. All right. Is it yes or is it no? All right. Well, in the meantime, if you have any questions, please uh, put it down in the in the box. All right, in the chat box, and then we will uh, raise it. Okay, there are seventy percent of you have voted. Okay, let's give another uh, twenty more seconds. Okay. So, do you often rely on indicators to trade? Yes, sometimes or not at all. I just want to know how many of you uh, really use indicators. Okay, uh, I guess for those of you who do not use, you're probably an investor. Am I right? All right, so I'm going to end the poll now and uh, we'll get the results. So, this is the result. Okay, today we have. 37% of you use indicator most of the time and 42% of you sometimes use indicator and 21% of you don't give a damn to any indicators. Okay, and I guess you all are a investor. Okay, now, well, I will just hide the result and then it's time for us to go to a question. Okay, now the first question that we have here is uh, when do we use the oscillator? Like on which time frame? Is it the one day time frame, one week time frame, or one month time frame? Which time frame is more effective to use oscillator? Um, if you're trading stocks, I would recommend you to use uh, daily chart or daily bar. So that means um, your default chart will be day bar. And then uh, the indicator you're using effectively in, in daily bar as well. So, uh, of course, you can actually choose to. Um, another time time frame I'm often used is actually five minutes chart. But um, for stocks, I, I wouldn't say unless it's very active. Otherwise, it, it could actually um, too fast for any indicator to 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 actually react to it. So I'll I'll choose uh, day bar for uh, all the method I'm using. In fact, I'm testing it in in daily bar. Okay, so now if we use the uh, the if we look at five minute chart, uh, let's say we do that five minute chart. Is it still the standard setting apply, or is uh you you will tweak you will tweak the RSI or stochastic uh, setting so that it is more faster, or it is uh, another setting is just right for that time frame? Do you do you do modification that way? I I think it's very good question. Uh. There's two parts to <laughs> excuse, answer this. First, um, whenever I use the indicator, I have luxury to, to backtest it using any time frame that I wanted. Uh, but I, I tend to stick to one setting, okay, uh, rather than multiple time frame, but multiple settings. The reason is because um, I, it, it will actually give you a different result, right? The reason I do that because I don't want to over optimize my system. That means um, I, I don't want, um, not to say I don't want, I don't believe if I optimize it further uh, with any way that I'm, 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 I, I can afford to do it, it's, it can actually improve the results significantly. But you can only uh, bring disaster to your trading because you over optimize or over curve it your system. So allow the system to have some flaws but how to repair the flaws is, is something that traders or an investor need to learn along the process, um, which I can, can not stress enough. Um, the only thing that you need to repair this will be on the risk management side. So once you get that covered up, uh, you don't need a perfect 
indicate indicators or system to actually able to trade and make money. Okay. Now, uh, since you say that the RSI is a mid-term indicator and stochastic is a short-term indicator, uh, can you comment like which one is more appropriate for 5-minute, 15-minute chart, 30-minute chart, or hourly chart, or daily chart? Uh, again, um, if you ask me to pick one, I will, I will pick um, stochastic all the time. All the time. Because stochastic has got, yeah, all the time. Because um, you, you don't need to have both e oscillator to help you. You can, com as I said, call in the effect. So you, you can have RSI and stochastic. So stochastic maybe give you three days, five days, you know, and RSI give you 14 days. But yeah, you, you, you only need one indicator to help you in terms of trading because when if, if you go in with stochastic, you need to go out with stochastic as well. So otherwise, you, you, you can't, you can actually backtest the system with going with one indicator and get out with another indicator. But I would strongly recommend do not backtest with so many indicators. So, so far, <clears throat> try to use only one. Uh, I will never use multiple indicators into my trading system because uh, usually it won't work. It won't work in real life trading. So it may give you a very good uh, backtest result, but it will never really, really work in actual trading uh, with multiple indicators in play. So pick one, I'll, I'll pick stochastic. You pick stochastic, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, for me, uh, my experience is that uh, stochastic give me more signal than RSI. La. So I will still prefer stochastic <laughs> because it give me more trading opportunity when I do that. Yes. Yeah. But uh, so the next question is based on your experience, uh, what are the parameter of stochastic or RSI that you think it will work in the Malaysia stock market? Uh, all right. Um, I think I have the slides. Uh... Actually, okay. Um, it's usually, still showing your slide. So you go back to your slide because it's still showing your your ah. Oh, okay, okay. You need to refer so, to your screen. Yeah. So I can show to you the. Uh, where is the screen? Okay. Here you can see that I'm I'm, I'm using stochastic um, um, fourteen as a default uh, period. You can use a nine. Okay. You can use a three, three, but in this case, I'm testing using uh, 14 and three is for the stochastic D. La, huh? The slow factor is actually three. So you can actually have this default. But again, as I said, <coughs> it is not that critical. You choose one particular parameter. You can choose one parameter, uh, parameter and stick to it. But you can also use this software, which is the Ninja Trader. You can ask the Ninja Trader to test from, let's say, uh, three to maybe 20 in terms of the K and the D, you know, to give you a best result. But as I said, stick to one, you can just use the bare uh, original or default setting. Use that to test. Then you can actually see whether the crossover of 80% or 20%. In fact, sometimes I, I, I play around with the stochastic, I said, Break 20, buy, break below 20, sell. So it actually, honestly, it doesn't change the result uh, that in terms of big change, but <coughs> rather it, it will have specific uh, pattern for different, different counters. Certain counters, um, so this won't work no matter how you tried it. Certain counters, it always works no matter how you apply the stock. So you have to come up if a characteristic of certain stocks may actually give you different result, but all in all, you can use pick one indicator and apply to most of the stock. Okay, because it, it's not practical for you to choose one indicator for one particular stock and so on and so forth. So, because you are trading stocks, uh, stock has got multiple counters. So, I'll I'll believe there's two way to to get this going. Uh, filter stocks with indicator. And once you have the stock filtered, doesn't matter the parameters. Okay, I'm using the default. Okay, 14, 3, 3 or 14 days, you know, for RSI. All right, and then couple with the financial ratio, which I just to, told you, P ratio. Very simple P ratio. Everybody gets it. Uh, you can even calculate yourself. Uh, price to book ratio. Very simple as well, which you need the tangible asset. And thirdly, uh, earnings growth. If you have a stock that growth in terms of earning, uh, usually this is a stock that I will only go in. I, I won't buy any stock that 
can't even have a growing in terms of earning per share. Of course, certain stocks, you make more money if you invest in this kind of stock. But uh, what you want is actually long-term uh, uh, profitability, then you need to choose this kind of stock. So, so after all, uh, pick the default setting, which <laughs> I think most of the software in the market, they already choose uh, the default, which is 14 for RSI, and then 933 or even 1433 for stochastic. So yep, you can pick the original one backtest with the way that I showed to you, then you will understand the indicator is only play a part of trading, not all. Mm, okay, so for you is 14.33 and 30 and 70, la, am I right? Mm. Okay, great. Yes. Uh, uh, but personally, personally, right, just to share with the uh, participants, I I use ten three three more, okay. I use ten three three twenty and eighty, okay. So <laughs> that's my preference. But anyway, it, it works for you even if you pick a nine three three or twelve three three, okay. So it's, you know, so it's uh, up to you and see where, whether your back test can yield the best result. Uh. I guess uh, CC has maybe done a, a lot of back tests, so probably fourteen three three is the one that works well for him. Now, uh, I had got a very interesting question here, who, who asked that, uh, why use indicator? If price movement is largely dependent of the big traders buying and selling, like uh, maybe market operators or market makers who, who move the shares, no. So can can uh, another question is can indicator like this inform when the big trader is in? Uh, okay. <laughs> the question is actually a bit uh, big, lah. Okay. In yeah. any market, in any market, um. There, there will be a saying that uh, a big player move the price and all this in futures in in anything la. okay but you see sometimes uh, the market is actually doesn't trade simple one direction it, it, it can do both okay uh, so why use indicator in this indicator is just a form to build a strategy which you have a plan to follow it, it doesn't matter the big trader or a or, 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 trader or any mover okay uh, to corner the market if you want to say that which i don't believe so it's, it's not easy to do this actually especially uh where the market or the the, the the stocks is actually quite liquid or if you pick the stock that i'm recommending using the busa marketplace to filter all the fund financial ratio you you hardly for you to find this kind of stocks okay this is what i believe all right second is that um Using the stochastic uh, or indicator that I need indicator that I back test, I'm actually filtered up, or should I say, I believe in technical analysis, which uh, all this factor has been factored into the price. So if I back test all the prices with this indicator, I already including all this movement, uh, uh, movement into uh, my strategy. So it's, it's not a perfect strategy. In fact, I, I wouldn't get a perfect strategy but if you're going to a trading every day in fact i heard this story quite often uh, every day you of you know you actually um cautious of any big players into the market which will stir up the market or will 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 take up your price and push you away and force you to cut loss if you're thinking of this it's, it's very difficult for you to trade Every day, the market I'm trading um, is, 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 is connected, you know, everybody will be trading into the same market 24 hours, let's say, for example. Um, yeah, there are some big players which 40 times, 50 times bigger than the size that I'm, I'm trading. Uh, they go in one time, the, the size they're trading is actually 40, 50 times bigger than me. So do I actually get squeezed by them? Not necessarily. Sometimes I actually prefer them to be there because they will push the price where you wanted it to be filled. You see, you, see, you want to sell a price, you need someone to buy your price, right? You need a big player to buy. You want to uh, buy something also, you need a big seller to sell it to you. So if you have a strategy that develop uh, and so robust, uh, you have all these parameters included in your system which actually you don't have to bother because once you back test and the statistic as i said the more sample you you you, you go into your your strategy eh, it already included all this big movement then it should be fine of course 
if you ask me, should I use indicator because the price is the one that um, more important? Definitely, as I said, if you're trading more in terms of trading um, so-called um, intraday, then you need to look at the price, which is the time and sell, which give you more indication whether there are more buyer or seller side, you know. But believe me, even you know that it's not going to be an uh, easy path for you to trade just by knowing this, okay? Because uh, you need to create a system. You don't have to look at other people uh, in order for you to trade. You need to build a system. You need to do something. Uh, not to say ignore, not to say ignore, um, that take into this account and you're able to trade. So thinking about having this kind of big players in, in the market is actually not going to help the certainly. As I said, every day I face this kind of traders, but I want to say I have no fear, but um, my experience let me know that um, as long as I head down and focus on what I'm doing every day, I should be fine because uh, um, the good thing about electronic trading is almost everybody has got a level uh, play field. So you put an order, as long as you are the one who faster than the other guy, so you are in front of them. So it is, of course, there are some front running ha happening, but you don't have to be so worried about that. Um, sometimes, of course, a lot of funds, they use this AI or algo to, to front run, to, to get prices better and all, so on and so forth. But if you're trading uh, as a manual trader, don't worry. Uh, it works uh, by building your own strategy and believe in your strategy, part of the price that you wanted, uh, it will get filled. Don't be panicked and then sell according to your strategy because the history price or you tell you this thing works regardless of what other people are doing. So look at the intraday prices may help if you're doing intra intraday trading. But if you're trading a strategy, uh, most of my trades are strategy. So I can tell you most of my stocks are parked and filled by this kind of big place. All right. Uh, and I keep on parking my orders. Let's say for example, I park at the support and resistance. So yeah, this is how I, I, I trade. And this it works regardless of who is the player and what is the player trying to think. In fact, I never try to figure out what they are doing because um, there'll be always a saying that the trader squeeze the retailers upside down, you know. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't put my mind into this kind of thinking, first thing first. Second, I, I don't believe this is really happening. Uh, third, uh, to me, it doesn't bother my trading, so I don't bother to think about this. So. Uh, sorry, very lengthy, <laughs> very lengthy uh, answer, but I try to give a point. System trading is uh, you trade, although I, I don't execute my orders with AI because it's, it's not easy. You need a lot of setup before you can use uh, computer to trade without emotion. But I try best knowledge that I can to trade without emotion so that I execute my trade uh, even I see a big order flow in and out. So to me, I'm just following my own system, my strategy. The order will fill, regardless who will fill the orders, whether uh, someone will get squeezed or squeezing others. So yeah, so I just let my system or strategy work for me. Okay, um, yeah, I understand that. Um, so is, is there any indicator that can track the, 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 the big player coming in or not? That, that was the, his second question. Uh, someone may have, but I don't. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't think I, I have this because you can see that I, I don't believe in this kind of uh, way of trading. So that's why, although someone may have it, but I don't have. Mm, yeah. yeah, as far as I know, uh, I, I can't think of any indicator that can track the big funds coming in. Uh, but uh, do check out this. Uh, this company called Fiat Vest, I think they, uh, their system can, can tell which are uh, the big orders coming at what, what uh, tick, uh, I mean, what, what price. So, uh, next question is, um, is it enough to be full-time trader by trading only Malaysian equities or derivative? Uh, answer is yes, uh, very much. Uh, in fact, in Malaysia, there's so many full-time traders, but usually, <coughs> Uh, maybe not aware, 
uh, trading stocks and <coughs> and also futures. All right. Um, um, there are PDD program for stocks. There are also a local participant programs for uh, futures. So these two are the programs that provided by Bursa Malaysia for those who intended to trade full time. Uh, the uh, the question is whether enough? Yes, enough because. Uh, as long as you can trade and generate money that cover, of course, it, it also depends on how much capital you put in. So you don't really have to trade so many different different instruments. And if you ask me a question whether I trade overseas product, uh, my answer is no. I'm I'm purely trading Brussels Malaysia products. And to me, this is actually a good opportunity because we we are the one who sit in the country itself, the stocks, the commodity, palm oil. You know, all these commodities products are, are in Malaysia. We are the one who know whether the weather, raining, flood, okay. So any change in terms of uh, government policies. So we are the one who actually first know. So uh, we should actually able to uh, at least be the champion of the kampong lah before you can uh, try other product. That's for me. Uh, second thing is why also I choose to stay uh, mostly locals because um, of the currency because. Uh, you know that ringgit against US dollar is actually quite fluctuate and, and expect to be fluctuate maybe the next four or five years, you know. So if you actually invested some instrument in US dollar, if ringgit strengthen, you actually suffer some losses there. In fact, it could be very big losses. Let's say if ringgit strengthen from four dollar, four ringgit to three ringgit, you're looking at 20% loss in terms of your for a uh, foreign currency. So you have to consider that as well in terms of uh, investing overseas, which is possible. I, I can see uh, many traders trading overseas products are still very successful. Uh, but yeah, currency wise, you need, you need to think twice as well. Mm, all right. So now the next question is, what is the difference between stochastic and MACD? Uh, okay. Stochastic will be giving you more to, towards um, the signal is actually much more sensitive compared to MACD. MACD effectively just uh, feel moving averages, so it gives you uh, the momentum of whether uh, mid to longer term kind of movement. Stochastic will be focused on very very short term, uh, three four day five days. You can consider this as a string trading, a small string trading. Uh, so yeah, basically. Um, the biggest difference is actually in terms of stochastic give you or more focus on the shorter term uh, indicator which is suitable for you if you're doing full-time trading in stocks. Okay, um, yeah, I think stochastic, stochastic is an yeah. oscillator but MACD is not an oscillator. Yeah, so the next question is, I know RSI and stochastic can mix with a uh, simple moving average to for a better result. But uh, how about directional movement system? Uh, uh, that the, the person asking is that like he mix it with a simple moving average, but the result is totally different. So can really this directional movement system indicator mix with others? So that's the question. You do you understand? Um, maybe I understand from mixing two, <coughs> excuse me, indicator. But as, as I mentioned before, don't mix too many indicator. Uh, if you're building a strategy, uh, in fact, if you're building a strategy, pick one maximum one indicator, okay, and then the next thing you need to develop is actually not mixing other indicator to give you better result because that is actually conflicting. It's actually improve your risk and money management. How that is actually requires some a lot of actually uh, so-called practice, you know. But one more thing, maybe I didn't mention is that also set your expectation to be reasonable. So if you want to set your expectation to be, if I put 10,000 every month, I can make 10,000, uh, not easy for a beginner. So in fact, I don't recommend this kind of uh, uh, expectation. So you, you also need to consider about this. So mixing indicator will give you different result, definitely, because um, it will give you very different result sometimes and, and too complex and you cannot control. My practice always shows me if I mix too many indicators into a system, it's very difficult for you to execute manually. So every time you have to look at three or four indicators and you don't have a very good 
um, statistic to back why you should do it do this so yeah in fact i don't recommend you to use two three indicators into trading mm, so you only rely on for for so you personally only rely on, only rely on uh, oscillator rsi oh, sorry stochastic and naked chart lah. yes of course i use uh, moving average also uh, uh, to help you to to, to trade but when you build a system, don't use too complex, okay? So sometimes you look for socket signals, just use that, all right? Or sometimes you use um, moving average to build a strategy. Um, you may actually look at socket to help you whether this is actually uh, slightly better signal, but don't mix the two indicators to be confirmed by signal only you go into one trade. That, that wouldn't work in long run, actually. So um, does the so when you do pet, that bad test with Ninja Trader, you can pick the market that you want to back test with, is it? Or, it, or Ninja Trader run across all, all markets that have price action? Okay, um, you can choose the, the data that you have. Um, they allow you to download some data from their data, uh, database. Okay, you can actually choose which, you can group them into market. You can back test all data that you have. That means whenever market the data you have in your computer, they will test for you, or you just push choose one particular counters but in my case i choose all the counters that i i i, I put in all the data into the ninja trader oh so that means the ninja trader itself already has busa malaysia price action data historical years uh you you have to purchase uh most of them that what they have is actually mostly uh in in terms of uh futures and indices uh but for stocks you actually have to uh uh, download and put into to the. Uh, so we probably need to yourself. buy data from Busa Malaysia and upload it in the system so that it can run the indicators or, or the data that we yeah. uploaded and see how effective is the system, yes. is the strategy. Mm. Yes. I see. Excellent. Now the next question is between RSI and stochastic, which has more more noise, uh, like false signals, and apparently stochastic used mm. to have a lot of false signals. Yeah. Uh, in, in fact, stochastic will have false signal when, when I just mentioned when when the big trend or the market, the price is in sideways. So once you see a, a very <coughs> a significant sideways market in a particular counter, stochastic will have a lot of noises. So RSI also will have noises, but the noises come maybe 14 days later. So stochastic will have faster uh, 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 noise whenever the market is in sideways. So don't use oscillator when the market is sideways. So yeah, so that's why if you use an oscillator in sideways, you also buy and sell a lot of <clears throat> uh, noises uh, and you end up not making money. So more noises, stochastic, but how to filter that is difficult. Um, if you're using manual trading, when the market is in significant sideways uh, or well-known market, uh, overall market is very quiet, using oscillator will give you a, a lot of noises which you could actually lose money so you have to know that yeah all right so uh how does open interest relate with oscillator so that's the next question mm, i don't see o oxid i mean open interest combined with uh, stochastic uh but i do look at open interest whenever let's say when i'm because open interest is actually more or less trading futures so especially uh, when certain contracts uh, to see whether this is actually active one so open interest is one of the best way if you go into any futures market uh, whenever you see open interest is high then that is the contract that you should actually look for but combining with stochastic I don't see a very significant uh, 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 trading signal but if you apply an indicator into a contracts that you're, you're not aware of. Let's say, for example, you go to trade Busan Malaysia uh, FCPO, Krupam Oil, you don't know which, um, because they have so many contract months, you want to apply an indicator back test into one of the contracts, which one to choose? Choose the one with highest open interest, because although there are many contracts, one is the highest, and then the second one, maybe not the high, but you know, maybe the January, February, February has got no open interest or very little open interest, but 
much maybe more open interest. So January has open interest is high. February may be very low, but March can be higher as well. So you can trade January and March and, and apply this your, your system into this particular uh, contract. But you could or you may want to skip February because of low open interest. Yeah, that could work actually. Mm. Okay. Uh, all right. So the next question is, uh, just now we mentioned that uh, when a stochastic crossed 30 or 70, do you refer to K line or both K and the D line? Uh, for stochastic, I refer only to K. K for line. 70 and 30. I mean, when K crossed 30 yes. and 70, it can give you a buy or sell signal according to the strategy. A D line does not matter. Yes. Mm. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so the next question is... Uh, K cross signal validity should be occur above seventy percent, below thirty percent, or it can be anywhere between zero to hundred percent. All right. Um, the K, K cross below uh cross above the D is actually preferable to happens below thirty. Very good question actually. And if cross below, that means the sell signal will be uh above seventy, which is the best. So that means for buy signal below thirty, K cross over above of D. So for sales center above 70, K cross below D. Yes. Very good question. Thank you. Mm, yeah. It's a very good question. <laughs> All right. So um, the next question, is it trading with naked chart better with, than indicators? Depends on what market you're trading. Um, I would say um, uh, there's certain market that I'm trading. Uh, Let's I'm talk not about sure whether you're aware. Actually, I'm trading... Uh, Let's talk about stock. Uh, right? Yeah. Or stock like, uh, is it naked chart? If we talk, talk, actually can. Because most of the market, let's say, for example, especially if you're trading different time frame, let's say, for example, long-term uh, trading, you can look at chart pattern without looking at indicator because you're investing long-term. So you need to know the where is the top bottom, where is the support and resistance. So you can look at the naked chart uh, alone. But looking at naked chart has got one drawback, which you need to interpolate all this by yourself. So whether how many bars it has been dropping, how many bars it went up. So whether this is actually within 20 bar signal. So during bar break out. So you need to look at all this mentally. But if you look at indicator, choose one, okay? Then you will have confidence whether it's below 30, then so I look for buy signal. If above 70, I look for sell signal and keep the stock. Lah. So that's why it depends on what market you, or what kind of, time frame or what kind of trading method you're looking at. But if you want to look for a fast trading signal, so you need to rely on something that gives you a very clear cut signal. Every time this happens, this will be the next. So if it's wrong, then I cut out at 1%. So stochastic or indicator will give you a very simple uh, trading um, idea. Thirdly is <clears throat> using bar alone, it's very difficult to program into uh, any computer, not easy, possible to fire up a buy signal. So you can say every three bar positive white bar buy signal, but it's very hard to program this way. But it's much easier if you pick one simple in or common indicator and, and, and try to build a system out of this. So for a starter, using indicator will be a best start for you to actually prove any um, trading method whether it's, it's actually workable or not actually what i expect is uh, once you understand you can backtest this kind of thing you will actually start to build start not to listen to so many different different ideas and start believe in yourself building the system and it takes some time okay but once you get this it, it, it will be something that works for you in long run so Building a system or try to figure out a system how this works uh, uh, on naked chart itself is far, far more difficult because to program a chart pattern recognized system, you probably need an AI already. So yeah, it, it's actually much, much, much uh, difficult to just put this into Ninja Trader. In fact, in Ninja Trader don't have a chart recognized system or pattern recognition system in their BN formulas. Hmm, I see. All right. So yeah, um, probably we'll come to the end of this webinar. Uh, let me take back the control first. Okay, show my screen. Can, are you all seeing my screen now? Okay, well, let me 
go to um, uh, alright so here are some announcements like uh, in case you are not aware all new investors will be given a fee waiver on trading and claiming fee for six months effective first March of 2018 and uh, second announcement is that the stamp duty on shares for mid and small cap companies will be waived effectively first March 2018 for a period of three years and uh, stamp duty for contract notes on ETF and structural warrants will be waived effective 1st January 2018 for a period of three years as well. So, and lastly, no GST for all, uh, uh, no GST imposed on the, so 0% GST imposed on the uh, uh, trading fee, clearing fee, and uh, the brokerage fee as well. So, well, uh, next webinar, we will talk about SMA crossover method, how you can rely on simple moving average uh, to make decisions, okay, when, when uh, which time frame we're looking at, I mean, and uh, which moving average crossover are we looking at, are we looking at long-term moving average or short-term moving average crossover, is it 250, so in next uh, webinar, we'll talk about which are the more effective SMA crossover technique they can look at and they can yield you a good result. So it's on 4th September 2018, it's a Tuesday, 8.30 to 10 o'clock. So if you want to register, please uh, go to the chat box. The registration link has been sent to you. Please click and register for our next webinar where we talk about how to use simple moving average crossover method. With that, um, thank you very much and thank you CC for tuning in today to share with our audience on your valuable insight on how you use RSI and Stochastic to trade the stock market. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You yeah. So, and have a pleasant rest of the day, guys. Thank you for tuning in.